Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotoPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads to Pocono Raceway for the Pocono 400 on Sunday afternoon. It's called the Tricky Triangle for a reason. It's only got three corners on this track. It's a two and a half mile tri-oval. Turn one has 14 degrees of banking, turn two has eight degrees of banking, and turn three has six degrees of banking. So that's going to be the biggest challenge for teams this week. Um, crew chiefs and car chiefs especially get in the car set up for the driver to either work well in all three corners um, with more of a, like a balanced setup or sometimes you'll see a driver who may not be great in one turn but will be very strong in the other two um, a lot of drivers may sacrifice turn one to be very strong in turn two and three especially turn three um, coming to the start finish line there so that's going to be the biggest challenge this week um, listening to drivers through practices qualifying a lot of interviews and definitely um, you know, jump into chat. I can I can share some of those links for you. Definitely follow Bob Pockers on Twitter. He had a lot of those interviews. It's going to be tough to pass. Um, so be careful when you're looking at those drivers starting back in the pack. Make sure they've either one got a good pit crew, two got a fast car that they can be able to make it through the field. Um, just because with this new package, that is one of the things a lot of drivers are saying is it's just going to be very tough to pass. Heard from um, Kevin Harvick and Martin Truex Jr., who are starting outside the top 10, who said it's going to be very tough to get back into that top 10. Once you get up front, it can be very, not easy, but it's going to be a lot easier to stay there versus trying to get up there in the first place um, through all the dirty air with this new 2019 rules package, which originally they weren't going to be using the air ducts they have decided after the atlanta race they changed things up and decided they will be using the air ducts here at the pocono race as well as the michigan race um, so keep that in mind this is the full package so we're going to see it's going to be hard to pass track position is huge with that let's jump into the into the sheet here into the picks have a look at some drivers that really stand out this week so I've got everything loaded here on, on the sheet. I've got my initial core plays highlighted here. Um, you can see that that's the members only sheet where I highlight my top plays. So you can get that uh, dfsr.com or rollerpros.com in either of the chats. Just reach out and I can share that members only sheet with you. The rest of my picks will be highlighted here by the end of today. So looking at some track history, some guys that stand out. Obviously we're going to go... Um, sort by track history, look a little bit. You've got Kevin Harvick who's been extremely consistent here. Kyle Busch has two wins. Um, in his last three races, took him 26 races to get his first win. He's won two of the last three. Um, we've got Martin Truex Jr., who stands out there as well. Chase Elliott, Kurt Busch, Eric Jones. Um, looking at the career track history, which I'm not weighing this week just because this 2019 rules package, it, it's I'm really looking more at the practice and qualifying um, information a little bit more this week just because of this. This is the first race on this track with the new rules package. But there's the career track history. Look at some drivers coming in hot here right now. It's been a very interesting run for Martin Truex Jr. He's won three races in the last six, but he's alternated those with finishes outside the top 15. So it's been either really good, um, I would call outside the top 15 for this, for that 19 team, uh, really bad. So um, definitely that. Joey Logano doesn't have a win in the last six races, but he's been extremely consistent. He's got four top fives and five top tens and a series best 5.5 uh, average finish as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, Chase Elliott's been extremely consistent here lately as well. The only other driver besides Logano with four top fives in his last six races here. Um, he's got a 6.7 average finish. That win came at Talladega. Uh, Kyle Busch has fallen off a little bit considering uh, how good he's been this year. He's got a top 10 in all but one race for the season. He's only led 257 laps in the last few races. Um, he had his first finish outside the top 10, but he's still a dominant driver. Stay tuned for some more information on him. 
So looking at the practice and qualifying information, practice one and two came on Friday. That information is here. Only two drivers, uh, Kyle Busch and Brad Kozlowski, finished top five in both of those practices. We've got the 10 lap averages here as well. I'm weighing this week, and then we've got practice average between one and two. Definitely weighing that very heavy. I want to know who's got a fast car in this rule package this week. And then qualifying I've got up there. I've got 15 on it right now. Just be, just from listening to the drivers say that it's going to be tough to pass. So track position is going to be huge. Um, obviously, that means restarts are going to be big, um, handling with the car on restarts. And then also, this is an impound race. So after the... Tech came before qualifying, so we're not going to have to wait till Sunday to find out the official starting lineup. But in qualifying this week, they can they can go ahead and change tires, but the, the setup for the car will remain the same because the cars are impounded after qualifying until the race tomorrow. They'd be able to change a few minor things, but when it comes to the race setup itself, they probably were as close as they were going to get. So some of those cars that were trying for qualifying position maybe over race setup, are going to be a bit of a disadvantage off the start, so keep that in mind. That's another reason why I have qualifying up front, because those are going to be your fastest cars at the start of the race, most definitely. There's going to be adjustments that come. Um, look for the strong teams to, to move forward there as well. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to sort by DraftKings price in here. Kyle Busch is obviously at the top. He's won, like I said, two of the last three races here. He's been very strong. Uh, top five, I believe he's got top tens in four straight. He's led 50-plus laps here in three of the last four races. And as you can see, he was top five. The only other driver to do that is Brad Kozlowski, top five in the first two practices on Friday. He was also fastest in 10 lap averages in that final practice. He's qualifying on the front row. So while I think William Byron, who I'll mention here, um, 7,600 on DraftKings, 8,300 on FanDuel, he's starting from the pole, was very fast. They do that uh, layover picture during qualifying where you can see the top three cars and how close they were. Byron was a very strong, so I think he has a chance. Top 10 in both first practice, first two practices. I don't think he's got a long run car. I don't think he's going to win the race. I think he can get out and he can lead some laps early, getting us some points that way, maybe 10 to 20 laps before I think Kyle Busch takes over the lead there. Um, he doesn't have the greatest long run cars. You can see he was 11th in 10 lap averages. I still think he's a top 10 car for the week, most definitely. Uh, play him a little more on FanDuel. But I think pairing him with Kyle Busch gets you... I don't know, anywhere from 50 to 80 laps led here in this race. So I definitely like that combination. Kevin Harvick stands out. He has been very, very consistent here. Top fives. Um, we'll just go ahead here and we will look at the racingreference.info. He's got top fives in five straight, top tens in six straight races here. Um, he's got two back, uh, back to back in 2014 and 15 here. Runner up finishes. He, he does looking for his first win here and his first win of the season. Um, He's been very strong here. He's led some laps lately when I'm looking at current form. So I think he can jump up and he can be a car that will contend this week. I don't think he's going to lead a lot of laps. I'm not looking for him for the Dominator this week. I think that's Kyle Busch, William Byron a little bit. Um, possibly Chase Elliott gets up there and leads some laps. I like his 10 lap averages. But Kevin Harvick, I think, is going to be a strong car. Brad Kozlowski stands out to me next. He's number two in my model. He's top five in both practices, right behind Kyle Busch in 10-lap average in that final practice, qualifying in the top five, so he's going to be up there. This has not been his greatest track um, overall. He, he was in a crash here last July, but before that, he had top fives in five, six straight races. Um, so he had a win back, I believe it was in 20, I want to say 2011, um, but so he has had some success here. So I definitely like him. I like the speed in that car this week. And then staying in that Penske camp, I definitely like Ryan Blaney at 8,900. 10-5 on FanDuel. A little bit up and down. Uh, more of a GPP play for me this week. He, he showed a lot of speed in practice one. He was second. Um, and then he fell off a bit in practice two. He was 14th. Yet he had the sixth fastest 10-lap average there. Qualified 17th. So there is some place differential there for Blaney this week. I don't see him as a top five car with this kind of the speeds and getting through the race, but I think he's like a fifth to eighth place car for sure. And at that price, starting 17th, I'm definitely going to be looking at him. Kurt Busch stands out as well. Uh, Blaney, like I said, he's more of, he's supposed to be blue here, more of a GPP play. Kurt Busch, I like starting 21st. He won this race. Uh, we go back and look at the last six races here. Go back to 2016. He won this race, uh, started ninth led 32 laps in there, 
Um, had some had a good scoring day there as well. So definitely looking at him with some with some track history in that sub 9K range on DraftKings. Starting 21st gives us some place differential as well. He was the fastest car in second practice. Those 10 lap averages don't look great, so I'm not expecting uh, a ton of upside there for Kurt Busch this week. But I do think he's going to be around 8th to 12th, right around that uh, top 10 position. Um, once things get going into the race, uh, probably by the end of stage one, he's going to be up there. So definitely looking at him. Hendrick Motorsport stands out to me this week. I already talked about Chase Elliott. I already talked about William Byron. I'm definitely looking at those two drivers. They've all got some good track history here. We'll go look at it quick. You look at Chase Elliott. He's finished top 10 in four straight in five of his six career races here. William Byron has only raced here twice. Started out with an 18th place finish last year. Came back in July and finished sixth, so very strong there. And then Alex Bowman um, had a terrible run to start his career outside the top 25 finishes in five straight. Came back, bounced back in July last year, finished third. So definitely like Team Hendrick this week. They're all coming in uh, pretty hot. Uh, Elliott's got top fives in four straight. Alex Bowman's got top tens in five or in four straight, including three straight. He had three straight runner-up finishes there as well. And Byron's been strong lately, um, fairly strong in the most recent races as well. He's shown some speed. So definitely looking at them at different price ranges. Elliott is fourth. Fifth in price in here of the top drivers. we got Bowman stuck there in the middle. Probably a little bit more. Uh, starting 15th, I will consider him in all formats, but he's more of the GPP play out of these drivers just because of the price. Byron going down. Um, starting first, I don't think that's going to hurt him too much on FanDuel. Like I said, I think he finishes somewhere in the 5th to 10th range, and I think that's okay at 7,600, on FanDuel. So those are my core drivers this week. If you want to know about any other drivers, definitely hit me up in the Rotopros chat room, the DFSR chat room. Leave your comment below in this video. Hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore Bombs9. Definitely help you out. we got the race tomorrow, so we've got all, all afternoon today, this evening, and tomorrow morning to make lineup. So definitely reach out. I can help you with some one-on-one -on -one, uh, if you want to know about other drivers, track strategies for building lineups, DraftKings, FanDuel, whatever you want. One and done. I play a lot of one and done leagues as well. So definitely help you out there. With that, thanks for watching the video. Make sure to hit uh, like and subscribe. A lot more videos coming down the line. With that, let's go make some lineups and get some green screens this week. Good luck, everyone.